Huh. Whew. Wow. I feel like we just climbed Everest. We've been hiking forever, but ha, oh, look at that view. We're on top of the world. We're so high up, we could reach out and touch the clouds. Oh, me too, Mia. If we don't find some place to rest, I will die of exhaustion. I am so hungry, I could eat a horse. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that literally. <laughs> it seems like it wants us to follow it. Maybe it'll lead us to the guardian of hyperbole. This lesson is all about another type of figurative language that can make a poem as breathtaking as this view. Hyperbole. By the end of this lesson, you'll be an expert at identifying hyperbole and analyzing why writers use it in poetry. Okay, that horse is running faster than the wind. We better fly if we want to keep up. Looks like we stumbled on a town so quiet you can hear a tumbleweed sneeze. I bet the guardian of hyperbole is in this town. And based on our experiences so far, we'll probably have to use hyperbole to lure him out. Hmm. Each of these buildings does have a sign posted, though. Oh, why don't we practice recognizing hyperbole by identifying which of these buildings' signs are hyperbolic? First, let's record a definition of hyperbole that we can come back to. In your PDF, you'll see some hyperbole examples we've already heard. Based on these, what would you say hyperbole is? Write your ideas in the space provided in your PDF. Pause the video and resume when you're ready. You probably noticed that these examples all contain some extreme exaggeration. And that's because hyperbole is a statement that is purposefully exaggerated to an extreme degree. For example, earlier when I said I could eat a horse, I was using hyperbole by exaggerating how hungry I was. Now let's take a look at those building signs. While we read the poems, follow along in your PDF. Underline any examples of hyperbole you notice. Then circle the poems that contain hyperbole and cross out the ones that don't. Let's start at the steakhouse. In the world's best steakhouse, where legends devour, steak so tender, time stops for an hour. Flavors so bold, cowboys trade gold for a bite, and a hundred thousand cowhands ride in every night. I'm seeing a lot of exaggeration here. This is probably not actually the world's best steakhouse, and it doesn't seem possible for literally a hundred thousand customers to eat there each night. I also doubt that these stakes can make time stop. We'll circle this as yes for hyperbole. Now let's do the same for the poem outside the bank. Transactions made, the service fine. Sign here please along this line. Balance checks, routine affair. In banking, excitement is rather rare. Here, every line seems realistic to me. There are no extreme, impossible statements. Let's cross this one out because it doesn't have any hyperbole. Now it's your turn. Read the remaining poems in your PDF, underlining the examples of hyperbole that you see. Circle poems that contain hyperbole and cross out those that don't. Pause now and resume when you're finished. Let's review. Okay, how about the post office? This poem simply describes where the post office is, what it does, who uses it, without any exaggeration. No hyperbole here. Let's cross it out. <laughs> Lastly, the general store. This poem claims the store's shelves are endless and infinite goods reach the moon. Definitely extreme statements. So, that's hyperbole. There's something else posted outside the sheriff's office. 
It says the guardian of hyperbole is wanted for causing this whole town to fall asleep. When we wake him, we'll save this sleepy town too. We've done a great job identifying hyperbole, so now let's discuss why a writer might use it. I'm sure that will wake him up. Let's start with why you think writers use hyperbole. Keep in mind, the reasons can vary. Take a moment to look back at some of the examples we've seen so far. Pause and answer the question in your PDF. As you can see, hyperbole can serve several different purposes. For example, when I said it was so quiet you could hear a tumbleweed sneeze, I was obviously exaggerating to be hilarious. The steakhouse uses hyperbole for another reason, to dramatically illustrate the joy of eating their food. In the case of the general store, they exaggerate their inventory so customers come in to buy something. So as we can see, writers can use hyperbole to create a humorous effect, to emphasize an idea or feeling, or to persuade readers of a belief. Often it's a combination of all three. Whoa, what was that? Oh, we've woken up the guardian of hyperbole. Let's go. Oh, we'll have to outduel him by showing our sharpshooting skills and picking apart hyperbole, sharper than a cowboy's aim at a tin can. Oh, looks like the duel will be a card game. Each card will have a poem on it, and in order to win, we'll need to identify the hyperbole in each poem and analyze its purpose. Remember, it could be more than one. You'll find copies of these poems in your PDF. As we read, underline any hyperbole you see and identify their purpose. Here comes our first card. The Thunderous Herd. Oh, the stampede, a roaring river of hooves. Each beast a furious storm upon the dusty plains. Mountains tremble neath the weight of their passage. The earth itself groans outdone by their might. Did you see any hyperbole? If so, underline it. I do. The speaker exaggerates the strength of a stampede, calling each beast a storm, saying mountains tremble and the whole earth gets outdone. How fierce! Well, what is the purpose of all this exaggeration? I think the reader is using hyperbole to emphasize the feeling of the stampede. That means they are exaggerating to make the intense feeling stand out. This hyperbole also persuades us to believe it was immensely powerful. The Guardian is stealing our last card. Pause the video and have another go at underlining the hyperbole and analyzing its purpose in your PDF. The valley this poem talks about must be Verse Valley. The poet exaggerates how silent the valley has become and how powerful poetry can be to revive it. It says verses can make the desert bloom. Rhymes are richer than gold. Stanzas are tall as redwoods. Why is hyperbole being used here? I think the hyperbole is used to emphasize the feeling of poetry's beauty and to persuade us that it will restore this valley. We did it, y'all! The Guardian of Hyperbole is headed back to the Temple of Poetry. I reckon it's about time to dust off these boots and sort out the next steps. Before we head out, I think I'd like to grab a bite to eat. That steakhouse should be opening up shortly and I am hungrier than a lone wolf on the open range. Oh, then we'll grab our gear and get gunning for a glimpse of the great guardian of sound. Until then, every story is a new horizon. See you next time. Yeah! Hey, hey.